our exercise number two. We have a beautiful India Robusta coffee, and uh, this is a washed coffee, India Robusta washed coffee, and this is a Myanmar, Myanmar uh, washed coffee. So we've got two coffees right next door to each other, India and Myanmar, both in Southeast Asia and uh, both washed coffees. So here we're really just isolating the species difference between Robusta and Arabica. So I've pre-ground my coffee. My water is boiled and ready. I'm gonna take a quick whiff of the fragrance. The fragrance on this just really jumps out. It's really strong like uh, if you're in the States and you ever had corn nuts, so uh, roasted corn, toasted corn, um, kind of like burnt popcorn, but not really burnt because there's not that charred flavor, just like roasted corn. There is a little sweetness in there. You've got this sweet, almost sweet pungency, sweet leather, like when you have a real nice fresh leather. Um, sweet earth, so very uh, interesting and dynamic. This coffee also smells sweet, almost like a lush green, like a sweet pea or like a sweet bean. And uh, only the pleasant quality is like when you snap a fresh garden bean or when you're working in the garden and you just have that fresh greenness. Not a bad vegetal. Yeah, kind of like brown sugar, sugar cane. Uh, yeah, the smell when you open up a, a sugar jar, a brown sugar jar. That's nice. All right, so I've got my timer here. We're going to go four minutes. And again, this is uh, 10 grams of coffee to my 180 grams of water. So that gives me my 1 to 18 ratio. Filling up both cups, four minutes. So by controlling all the variables like this, then in good scientific method, I can isolate the only difference, which is the coffee. Um, if you brew this at home on like a pour over or something else, make sure you really brew them the same way. Wow, yeah, just that earthy, robust. It's called robust, robusta, robusta for a reason. Kind of delicate, tropical fruits, flowers, you know, adjectives, wild. This is just a wild cup of coffee as compared to a very robust, earthy cup of coffee. All right, I'm going to put some water in here, cool down. Makes my spoons really hot, but just pull them out and don't, don't burn yourself before you put them to your mouth. So we're going to come back and we're going to look at these after my four minute timer is up, break the crust, talk some more about what we're experiencing here. But I wanted to finish with however you brew this at home. So if you can do a cupping like this, it's perfect because you can really isolate all the other variables and just focus on the coffee. If you have a small coffee maker like a dripper, that's actually a good way because that machine is programmed to do the same thing every time, same temperature water every time. So at least you've isolated uh, all the other variables that you as a personal brewer, however you do it, uh, you could potentially screw up. The other way is in a French press. Actually, French presses, one of their uh, benefits is that they're so predictable. So if you have a French press, uh, use a standard French press grind for that. You know, grind should always follow the brewer. But uh, if you French press this coffee, uh, put it in something, you know, ideally you can do that quickly on this one. The worst thing about that if you only have one French press is that your first coffee is going to cool down faster. So you always be comparing a cool coffee with a warm coffee. But maybe you can preheat, warm up a thermos, and you can uh, try to get the temperature very stable on both of these so that you're drinking them at the same temperature, same time, again, isolating those variables. Got about a minute to go here, but I'll take a pause. Talk to you soon. All right, 
So we just passed the four minute mark. I'm going to restart. No, I'm going to wait on the timer here. Um, first, the Robusta. Hmm. It's almost like spices, like um, oh, and talk about it soon. Hmm. Nice. They're both very different, but they have that they have that Asian quality to them, which is really nice. Why well, I like comparing. Uh, these two coffees, India with the Myanmar. But this Indian coffee, what I was saying is, it's got these spices in it. And while living in China, especially, well, the Chinese people believe that the uh, redder, or rather the more uh, intense your meat, the more spices you need. So with lamb, with beef, with some of these red meats and wild meats, they'll add a lot of pepper, black pepper, chili pepper, a lot of spices, and including some of those um, Central Asian, Middle Eastern, uh, Northern China, it's really Northwest China. Some of those spices like anise and cardamom and uh, you know, like star anise and black anise, you have these other types to their meats. And so you have almost this meaty spice, I'm not clove. I'm not just talking about, you know, chili peppers, but uh, very interesting. No off-putting aromas. This is a clean, uh, very clean, nice Robusta. I always like to buy nice Robusta if I'm going to buy it. I avoid that Robusta that smells like burnt rubber. Yeah, the aromas on this one, again, just kind of wild and light. Not too much different than the fragrance. So we're going to comb across the top here, scoop and dump. Cleaning the coffee, we call this cleaning the coffee. Oh, it's easy to sometimes get mixed up on your jars there. All right. I'm going to set my timer after I got it clean. I'm going to set my timer for another four minutes and then we'll come back and do the final tasting. Cupping time. Here we go. All right. So four minutes has passed on my timer. The coffees are cooled down. And again, we have isolated here the species. We've got Robusta from India washed, Arabica from Myanmar washed. And these two coffees are going to be wildly different. Wow. I may not be able to sleep tonight. Immediately, this coffee hits me with big body and bitterness. Trademarks of the Robusta. Robusta coffee has twice as much caffeine as Arabica coffee. It also is prized in Italian espressos, traditional espresso blends for its body because in a little cup of espresso that you're going to put milk in or other additives, you want that coffee to have lots of body, lots of coffee flavor. So this is just a mouth coating, bitter coffee flavored coffee, but it's good. And it has that, again, it reminds me of like my buddy. Uh, he used to smoke cigars and he had a leather working shop and uh, he didn't smoke cigars. He smoked pipes, handmade pipes. So you just have this like roasted, earthy, tobacco, leather. And I actually love India Robusta. So now let's try the Myanmar. Be careful how you aspirate. I almost... Started coughing on that one. Wow. These two next to each other, just striking. Immediately, the acidity and the sweetness 
just come flying out of the spoon. So I just started with big body bitterness and I went to this acidity, sweetness, cleanness, less body, not bad body, but while this one is huge and chewy, <laughs> I can use the word chewy. This one is, it's just a medium body. Now it has a really nice, pleasant aftertaste, whereas this one was lingering and you know, it's overbearing. It's not bad, but it's just overpowering on the Robusta. But the Myanmar, again, that acidity is like tropical fruit. Brown sugar, I've said it before, peanut brittle. You know, when you go to the county fair and you get you get the roasted peanuts that have or almonds that have been turned in sugar and cinnamon. It's really, really nice. That's a really sweet coffee. But you put that in espresso, or you put you pull that as an espresso shot straight, it'd be great. You put milk on it and it'll start to disappear. Uh, I think it'll blend really nice, but uh, you know, it just doesn't stand up with that huge coffee flavor, that huge boldness and body like this India does. But yeah, there's a bitterness in that. So both of these really nice clean coffees. Uh, I would never drink the Robusta straight. This is the kind of thing that I would blend into my espressos and it is really important in a traditional espresso blend. Also, that layer of cream, crema, on the top of an espresso, um, Robusta is going to give you a real thick, heavy crema on top. All Arabicas should too, if they're roasted properly and if the espresso is pulled properly, you'll have crema on top, which is nice. But Robusta just has this extra bounce to it when it comes to the espresso shot and crema. So that was exercise number two. Uh, surprise some of your friends with this coffee. Um, you know, smell the beans, just the beans, and then you grind them and then you brew them and continue to develop your sensory perception on these amazing coffees. See you in the next one. We're making a major change from these, uh, these Asian coffees. We're going to jump to Ethiopia. I'll see you soon.